Dr. Amy Tillen here. This is video one in a six part series about ovarian aging and how important it is for your longevity. So the ovaries are actually the pacemakers of your body's aging for women. The ovaries determine how quickly you age. And what I mean by that is when the ovaries stop working, whether it's because of premature ovarian failure or because of menopause, that changes your hormonal balance to such a degree that you become much more at an increased risk for multiple different medical problems like cardiovascular disease, dementia, osteoporosis, urinary uh, tract problems, as well as psychological problems. That actually is going to increase your all-cause mortality just by not having those hormones on board. So I want to introduce you to the idea that our ovary, which is depicted here by this big pink fin, and the follicles inside, which are depicted by this little egg surrounded by a, a group of cells, may actually be the keys to decreasing your morbidity and improving long-term longevity in women. And I just want to state that I'm very excited that people are finally starting to research how we might delay ovarian aging as a way to get healthier and live longer. Stay tuned for the next videos about mechanisms and therapeutics. Okay, so this is part two of a six-part series on ovarian aging and how we might improve longevity if we could just delay ovarian aging. So this is the ovary. And I want to review a little bit about these little guys. These are the primordial follicles. When you are first born, you have within you about four to five million of these follicles, little premature eggs surrounded by some cells. By the time you reach puberty, you're down to about 500,000 of these. Now, each month, what happens is that a group of these primordial follicles, maybe 20, maybe 50, they get kind of recruited by the, by the ovary to develop into bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, bigger follicles. And at some point, this follicle gets so big, it's actually able to make estrogen and testosterone. In fact, these cells around the outside here are what make your steroid hormones. Eventually, one of these follicles, just one out of all those 20 to 40 or so, gets selected to become the golden egg. And the golden egg is the one that eventually gets released by your ovary here, and it gets caught by the fallopian tube where it goes down into your uterus and it waits right there for the sperm to come in. Now, what's left over is this little sac called the corpus luteum, which is gonna make progesterone. And this is during that second part of your cycle. So, as a reminder, you have all these primordial follicles. Only one every month gets selected to be the golden egg. What happens to the rest of them? They die off. We'll talk about that more in the next video. All right, this is video number three in the series on ovarian aging. Now, we talked about how every month during ovulation, a group of these primordial follicles gets selected to develop into a bigger follicle, and then one of them is chosen to be the golden egg that eventually gets released during ovulation. So over time, you're releasing about 500 of these golden eggs over the course of your lifetime. But what happens to the rest of these follicles? the ones that are either kind of still on the sidelines or the ones that kind of got changed into bigger follicles. Bad news guys, they die. They just get chosen and then they get dropped. And they get chosen and they get dropped and they turn into either senescent cells like zombie cells or they just die. When you get to a point where you're down to about a thousand of these follicles, that's when you hit menopause or premature ovarian failure if you're less than age 40. So that's really important because at that point, these follicles are no longer able to make the estrogen, the progesterone, the testosterone, and so you're no longer having cycles, you're no longer ovulating, and you're starting to have some of the signs and symptoms of menopause. So what could we potentially do about it? That's gonna be in the next talk. Stay tuned. Hi guys, this is video number four in our ovarian aging series. I got a new outfit on, but I have my same ovary. So I went into the fridge today to get some um, to get some eggs for you guys for this talk, and I realized that I was almost out of eggs. And I thought, oh, well this is fitting for our talk about premature ovarian failure, which is basically when your ovaries stop working before the age of 40. It's called premature ovarian failure or premature ovarian insufficiency. And there's a number of different causes. A lot of these cases are due to some auto immune component. So about 60% of women who have POF also have an autoimmune disease. This could be like hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. It could be Crohn's disease, lupus, um, all kinds of different autoimmune diseases. And it may be that the antibodies are actually attacking the ovaries themselves, or it may be that the inflammation from that autoimmune disease is hastening 
aging in the ovaries. We don't know for sure yet. Um, about a third to a half of people who have POF also have a genetic, genetic disposition to it. So they have some kind of mutation or genetic problem that maybe has, has brought this on. All of these have not even been discovered yet. For things like heavy metal exposures or a heavy smoking history can also cause premature ovarian failure. This is not my area of expertise, but if you have POF, I highly recommend that you see a fertility specialist or someone who is really, really good at this because it's a complicated disease um, and it should be treated early. Hi, we're here in video number five of our ovarian aging series. Let's talk mechanisms. Why are our ovaries aging so darn fast? The truth is our ovaries age about twice as fast as any other organs in our bodies. Um, and it actually doesn't have to be like that. We are one of only five mammals that actually goes through menopause, that has ovaries that just stop working for no reason. So the reason that they age, it's, it's still a question. There's a lot of research that needs to be done in this. It may be that these cells, these, these uh, follicles here, are just more susceptible to all the things that cause cellular aging in general. So that's, that's those nine hallmarks of aging, things like mitochondrial dysfunction, telomere shortening, um, DNA mutations, problems with oxidative stress causing the cell to dysfunction. Other theories that have been put out there um, and have been shown in animal models to be at least partially true is that the ovaries start to develop scar tissue or fibrosis. And this has been seen with aging and it's also been seen with obesity. Some of the other ideas are that maybe there's some kind of mixed up crosstalk between the brain, the hypothalamus in the brain and the ovaries. All those hormones and neurotransmitters maybe aren't communicating properly and that's facilitating aging. So lots more to be done about this. We'll talk about therapies next. Okay, we're here with video number six in our ovarian aging series. Let's talk therapeutics. So first of all, you have to know that almost all of the work that's been done in this has been done in animal models, which means not humans. So I'm not telling you to go take these things. I am telling you this for information only. So first of all, there are the antioxidants. So things like quercetin, N-acetylcysteine, curcumin, as well as melatonin have all been shown in animals to delay follicular aging, to delay the aging of our little follicles. Some of the other, other categories of drugs are things that improve mitochondrial function. So for instance, CoQ10, as well as uh, NAD precursors like NMN or NR, also seem to be able to delay follicular aging in animals. The drugs that are shown the most evidence in animals are rapamycin, which works by inhibiting mTOR, as well as metformin, which is going to increase AMP kinase. And, and these drugs actually have several studies that support their use in animals to delay follicular aging and potentially to even turn back that clock a little bit um, when, once you've already experienced aging. And then finally, DHEA, which is a hormone that it uh, communicates with the ovaries that seems to go down with age, and it's possible that that also may, may help to delay ovarian or follicular aging. We'll talk next about stem cells and PRP before we end this long and wonderful series.